Hey guys, how's it going? Well, here we are again at the 83 Cutlass Cruiser. And I wanted to tell you about a little uh, electrical issue I've been having with this car. Uh, I, I worked on it right after I got it running and driving. I thought I had it fixed, but evidently I do not. <clears throat> I'll tell you what's going on with it. Uh, I might have mentioned in one of the videos where I, the first couple times I took it around the block, up and down the street, and what have you, uh, the warning lights were acting a little strange. And let's go in here and I'll just tell you about that. What was going on with it. <clears throat> Excuse me again for the, the coughing and stuff like that. I've actually got a cold right now turned up having a cold so well anyway I mentioned I might have mentioned to you the first thing I noticed is that the uh, the charge light I think it's this one over here uh, was glowing dimly when the engine was running and they're not supposed to do that usually that means that something's going on with the alternator out there and sure enough it was that alternator was just barely charging so that was that that was one problem and then uh, when I came back in from a drive down the street, the uh, both the lights were on. Both those two top lights were on, like full strength, like oil and charge both. And they would come on and go off at the same time, but they weren't flashing. They stayed on, and then when I turned the key off, they went off. And then when I turned the key back on, they would not light back up again. So they were acting totally opposite from what they should be doing, and I, you know, I didn't think I had any problems with the oil pressure. Uh, which turns out I did not. So that was that was happening. So I'm scratching my head, I'm thinking, you know, what, what in the heck is going on with this thing? And uh, so um, I was put this, I put a new alternator on it, and. The new alternator will not charge. So, you know, I was like, well, that's not good. So I was trying to think about this, and it's been a long time since I've worked on one of these cars, and uh, I remember that these uh, these older alternators, like that one, that's a 10SI alternator. These older alternators, they have to have like a warning light or a resistor to get them to start charging so that's what that's part of the purpose of this light right here so that kind of made me think about this whole this whole gauge thing here why the lights were acting crazy so I found the problem I think before I tell you exactly what the problem was uh, I want to kind of explain how these gauges work um, and this is r roughly the same for uh, whether you have this what they call a granny cluster with just a speedo and a, a fuel gauge or you have like with a tack and speedometer and the four gauges over here it doesn't matter they're pretty much all work the same um, all these work the way that your warning lights work and your gauges work is they have a 12 volt they have a 12 volt uh, supply from the fuse box that's keyed with the ignition switch. When you turn the key on, it sends 12 volts up to one side of these lights and one side of the gauge. That's how they have to operate. So just think about this, that the oil light has power to one side of it, the other side's the ground. That's the side that goes out to the engine. Um, the charge light has 12 volts to one side and then it's, of course, it's hooked to the alternator. So the way that works is when the alternator starts charging, then you have it kind of actually feeds 12 volts back to the other side of this bulb. Well, if you have 12 volts on this side and 12 volts on this side, it's going to go out. That's how that operates. So that's why if you have a dimly glowing charge light, then you've, the, the, the side that's on the alternator side is not doing its job. So that's why it's allowing it to glow a little. Glow. And same for the brake light and temperature light and seatbelt light, things like that. They all have 12 volts going to them and they all come through the ignition switch and they all have a ground circuit of some sort on the other side of that ball so temperature has a temperature sender uh, the brake has a switch down here either you know for the emergency brake or for the some of them have a pressure switch that's out on the proportion valve so 
that's how that operates. That's how, that's, what, that's how you get your warning lights to function. It's also the same for the gauges. The difference is, um, Uh, sorry about that. That truck stopped. Those little girls riding their bicycle over there, and he, that truck stopped right here beside her. So you gotta watch crap like that. There's some freaking weirdos out here. But if you have gauges, you still have 12 volts supplied to one side of the gauge. You have usually a sending unit. I hope that's her dad back there. I guess it is. You have a sending unit that. I don't see. <laughs> Sorry about that. The truck just drove by again, but that's her dad's up there with her. <sighs> we are, a, this is a effed up society. <sighs> Losing my train of thought here. Um, okay, back where we were. If you have gauges in here, you turn the key on, you get power to one side of the gauge, the other side usually, like the oil pressure gauge, has a sending unit, but the difference is it's like a variable resistor, so the amount of ground going to the engine block uh, varies depending on your oil pressure. So I can explain that more in depth if you'd like me to at some point. Getting back to my problem, uh, these lights acting weird. Why did they not come on with the key, and why did they come on with the engine running? Well, it's kind of hard to explain that, but what happened was I had popped a fuse down here. I'll show you where the, which one it is. Dig out the light for you. Check all my pockets. There it is. All right. <clears throat> Look at the fuse box under here. It's a typical GM fuse box. It has, uh, I guess I better not shine that directly on there, but, okay. If you look right there, kind of right there, that one, if you look at that, if you can see up in there, let's see if I can illuminate it. Anyway, it says gauges. Well, I'll pull that out. That's a 20 amp fuse. And you can see that fuse is blown. Well, as it turns out, uh, this circuit uh, serves not only the gauge side of things, it's a gauge circuit, but it also, it runs, in this car it runs a seatbelt warning chime system and, and you know, in addition to that, so I was thinking, it actually runs something else, but I'm, I, I don't wanna jump ahead of myself, so. So I was thinking about this, I thought, well, why'd the fuse blow, you know? That, is something wrong in the seatbelt system? And uh, so I did some checking and I put another fuse in it and it blew again. But sometimes it would blow right away, sometimes it'd blow a little ways down the road. So I didn't know what was going on. Well, I decided, well, I need to look at the schematic for this thing. I looked at, I, I did a little bit of research and I found those, you know, it ran the gauges and of course it ran that, like I told you. But I said, something's going on here. Something, something, there might be something else to do with this. And sure enough, the third thing that this gauge fuse runs in this car is it supplies power, 12 volts to all these switching valves, which are on this smog pump assembly. And I know some of you guys, you don't have to tell me how much you hate smog pumps. I agree with you, I don't like them either. But this car is still all original. So uh, they are in place for now. So I got out here looking and I'll show you what I found. I left the light in here, damn it. Yeah. This was an interesting problem. So I got out here looking at this circuit real quick, and of course it bundles up in the harness, which I had actually worked on. I replaced some of the looming, because some of these wires look kind of suspect. But it comes around from inside the car, comes over here, goes around, comes around there, comes all through that mess, 
and then winds up out here and it splits off two different ways here it's got this one here and it's got another one that's up under nah you can't see it i'm not sure it even matters anyway but it's up under there there's two different plugs so i got looking over here and digging around and there's a wire in here that had some insulation missing so this is what i had done here i wrapped it with tape excuse me let me show you there that's it right there wrapped it with tape and put some looming around it because what happened is this valve cover metal valve cover over here has got some paint missing off of it so that's an excellent place for a short so i thought i had it fixed well i drive down the road again the other day and I get down the road and a little ways and I hear snap in there again. And then there comes the warning lights on again and off doing their thing. I said, like, Jesus. So today I come back out here again and expert mechanic here had evidently, if you can see that, right there. You see that bare wire right there? <laughs> well, it looks like it has been hitting on this brace right here and how I missed that I don't know I taped up all the way around on both sides of that and didn't get that little piece <laughs> so that's what's evidently causing this to happen still so I'm gonna fix it again and see if I can scrounge up another fuse to put in there and go from there and hopefully that should take care of it. that wire is coming apart I don't know if it's from heat or whatever but there's another part of this situation that I'll tell you about real quick, which is having something to do with this, and that's the fact that this engine has a broken motor mount on it. So whenever I put it in gear, this engine is slamming around in here. It's, it's jumping up and down and all that. And it, the V6, it runs kind of rough anyway, so that's, what, that's why it's critical to have all these wires taped up and not shorten out like that. So... That's a long, long, long explanation for this kind of a problem. But if you have something like this going on, you know, uh, try to get where you can read a schematic and, and think it through, you know, don't just condemn the fuses or the gauges or something like that because even though that was a gauge fuse, it didn't have anything to do with the gauges. That was just a symptom. The whole issue was a shorted wire out here, sorting out to one of these metal parts of the engine somewhere where you never even expect it so it's a good thing to do guys when you work on one of these vehicles uh, do a little bit of deductive reasoning so thank you for watching in the next video I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to show you how to identify a broken motor mount so and I'm not just going to tell you how a broken motor mount is supposed to look like I'm going to actually show you one in action so see you then